and still um, make a little bit of money. Um, so, <clears throat> also the hey. quality that I see in, in these Create Space books are is it's just so beautiful. I mean, it looks like it could be a, on the shelf next to Twilight and all those other vampire books. So I'm really, really happy with it. Some of the Lulu books that I've ordered from other people, uh, the covers don't look that great. And I don't know if it's because of the um, creator, the author, or if it's because of um, Lulu's printing. But um, I just I just didn't like the quality. I've also heard really good things about Lightning Source, which is a division of Amazon, that division below Book Surge. And space. they... Uh, create, 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 and then space. below that is Lightning Source. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's their distribution chain, and you can still get in the distribution chain, but they give you zero help. But if you're, you know, a little computer savvy, I understand the specs aren't hard to get through. That's the thing they have. They have everything that is available that's out there can help you through every step of whatever you need. You can go to Book Surge if you know nothing. You can go to Create Space if you have a, a semi amount of knowledge, or you can go to Lightning Source if you have everything ready to go. So it's all out there available. I was going to ask you, um, Arlene, when you went to Book Surge, what exactly did they offer you? I mean, what were the? Uh, could you give us it, okay, every you're, single you're thing? Up. I'm sorry. Could you give us every single thing? that they helped you with and then give us a round a ballpark part figure of how much to get set up um they helped me create the cover i gave them an idea of what i wanted they helped me create well um we went through setting up the labyrinth if you look through my book you can see the labyrinth that's in there the the way the page is set up the size of the book the color of the paper the color of the the ink that's used the font that's used um they they took my book and put it in Kindle format and um, got it up there when I tried and tried and tried and I think that with a Mac it's a little bit more difficult and again I, as you as you've heard I'm not technically inclined in that way so th I was very very grateful that they were there and I I absolutely love my cover and there's no way that I could have uh, created a cover like that now Rhonda was lucky in that she had a piece of art that a friend of her painted and then she was able to create a cover from that but I didn't have that available uh, and it was actual after I was done it was about uh, a close to two thousand uh, dollars then I order books from them I have books in my garage that I'm going to be taking to um, several different sites that I'm going to be able to sell them at or they, it is also for sale through them on Amazon and uh, and it's it's in every source available to publishers that is out there so um, and the rest of the marketing is being done by me. They offer, offered me all sorts of marketing tips. I told them what I was doing, and they said that I was three steps ahead of everybody else that's uh, being published by them. So, um, great. Yeah. So that's you know that's podcasting, podcasting in ebook form. Uh, get it out there. And author networking, which is very important for us to have. We need our support group, right, girls? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh sakes, yes. And Grizz, how about you? Do you have anything to say? Well, uh, as far as as far as that, as far as looking, if I mean, if you if you if you're an author, which I'm not, I'm just some guy with a microphone. But uh, if you are an author who is looking at the possibility of doing a podcasted book, and you're not really ready to necessarily do your own, I I would certainly say that what I've been doing with the public domain books is quite possibly a very good place to start because you can uh, learn the things you need to learn and make the mistakes you're probably going to make without it impacting on your own work and get your you know get your voice out there so people are actually uh, have an idea what you sound like when you read a book so that can be a starting point too and you can learn an awful lot about doing a podcast about doing a um about uh, producing an, an audio book just by going ahead and doing one. There's an awful lot of books out there that haven't been done. There's a bunch of them that have been done on places like LibriVox and um, that you could do a lot more with. I've got a stack I haven't even gotten started on yet. That's my bit as far as the publishing of books thing is concerned. That's a great um, idea because 
I know when I started doing podcasting, I wasn't sure about my voice, and I was little like, oh, um, uh, e, um, <laughs> you know, you get, you have to get comfortable behind the mic, and I started a little uh, kind of like a podcast uh, called Office Angst, and uh, just made so many mistakes and everything before I made my novel. So I think it's a really good idea to do that. You don't even have to publicize that. <laughs> work um you don't even have to say anything you'll get a couple of fans and if you don't push it you're not going to get a lot of fans but at least it'll give you practice and then a, a really good place to start that is at um, pod show which is now mevio.com you can start up your own little show it doesn't cost anything you can have as much space as you want you can have i mean everything is just wonderful there i mean it's so easy and uh, you don't have to have it all in book form, which is what you have to have for patio books. So you could just play around over there, um, get yourself set, and then start. My advice is start your pod novel over there. And if you go, if it seems like it's going well, then submit to patiobooks.com. And uh, Rhonda, I wanted to ask you about your book situation um from start to finish what did they do for you well you don't really want to talk about them is that right <laughs> oh you know i'll talk about them but if y'all want to plug the children's ears no um um my book um they wanted to charge me 15 grand to edit my book and i was like God, i don't have 15 grand i'm broke <laughs> I'm just some chick in her office with a book and a microphone. Um, <laughs> you know, um, so I, I hired an outside editor, and um, it, it, it was not near as expensive as it could have been, and she actually respected my writing, which was awesome, because a lot of editors don't. And um, then they wanted to put me in this special program because they liked my book, but they wanted to charge me an extra grand for that. So I think I put 1200 into iUniverse, but I don't think I got $1,200 worth of service from iUniverse. And if I was going to, when I do it again, I will be going with either Lightning Source or um, one of, because I know so much more now than I did then about setup and layout and, you know, bleed and all the things, all those words you don't know anything about when you're first starting out. I know so much more about how to set a book up so that it's ready to go into a format that you would do online that I would probably do most of the work myself. I can't even imagine at this point stepping um, into even a big publishing house who isn't going to spend any money marketing my book. I can do that, and I've done a really good job of it. Um, and I'm not saying anything bad about big houses, it's just that they don't have the money these days to put out on an unknown author. And right. podcasting has given me um, a foundation to work from. I mean, I'm thrilled with the amount of downloads I've gotten. I'm thrilled with the feedback. I have people joining my website every day and, you know, playing in the contests and getting together for the big giveaway at the end of the year where I'm going to award the original artwork for the cover. I mean, um, I've gone out and figured out how to market this thing for myself when they weren't willing to take the time to figure out how to market a dual genre book about druids. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you could yeah. stick my book in historical fiction or you could stick it in fantasy fiction or you could you could set it on a table, but I don't fit in any of those categories that they they have in books bookstores to set a book on a shelf. I mean, it's ju it's not like it would jump off the shelf and say, "Hey, me over here," and you have to think of it that way. I mean, I have to think of it that way when I walk into a local bookstore. What book is going to grab my attention and what's going to get me to pull it off the shelf? It's going to have to be the cover. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to read the back cover blurb. But that's one person doing that out of how many people that walk into that bookstore. When you go patio books or audio books or even ebook, you have this bigger audience that is really hungry for new works and new authors. And they're willing to take a chance on the new authors where publishing houses aren't. Right. 